Hi everyone, let us discuss this theorem. See, in this theorem, we are going to prove that a compact subset of metric space is closed. Okay, so let me write a given information. I'm going to consider XD be any metric space. Okay, so let me write here, let XD be any metric space. Just a minute, huh? Let XD be any metric space. And it has a compact set, let me call it as A. Let A subset of X be a compact set. Okay, so let me draw the diagram. So here we have a matrix space XD. So this is any matrix space XD. Okay, XD. And we have a subset of X. We, we have called it as A and it is compact. Okay, so that set is compact and what we have to prove, we have to prove that that set is closed. So to prove that A is closed. So there are various definitions of a closed set. Okay, so the first one is, let me write few of them. See if A complement is open. If complement of set is open, then we say the set is closed. The second definition is a dash subset of A. That means if the set A contains all its limit points, then also we declare it is a closed set. Third, if A is equal to A bar, A bar means closure of A. If A and closure of A, both of them are equal, then also we say the set is closed. So here I'm going to use the third definition, this third definition of a closed set. So let me mention to prove that A is closed, that is to prove that a is equal to a bar. So how to prove two sets are equal? The simple thing is first we prove a subset of a bar, then we will prove a bar subset of a. Therefore, if both of them are subset of each other, we can declare both sets are equal. So tell me which one is obvious. See definition of a bar closure of a is a union a dash. That means if you take a uh, union of A and limit points of A, then their union is A bar. So obviously A is subset of A bar. Let me write here, clearly A subset of A bar, or you can write by definition of A bar, A subset of A bar. So this is one. So the half part is done. Now we have to prove that A bar subset of A. Let me mention now to prove that a bar subset of A. So how to prove one set is subset of other? What we do, we take one point from A bar and we will prove that it is in A. So that's why we can say A bar subset of A. So let us take any point from A bar. Let X belongs to A bar be any arbitrary point. So I have taken one arbitrary point from A bar. Now we have to prove that it is in A. Do you know the definition of uh, X belongs to A bar? Okay, closure point. You know the definition. The definition is BXR intersection A is not equal to phi for all are greater than zero. So this is definition of closure point. Okay, so this definition I'm going to use. Actually, this definition similar to the definition of limit point. But in case of definition of limit point, we remove singleton x from that ball. But here we simply write bxr intersection a not equal to phi. And this is true for every r greater than zero. So let me use that definition here. So therefore, bxr intersection a is not equal to phi for all r greater than zero. So the most important thing is for all r. If you take any arbitrary radius r greater positive real number, then the ball with center x radius r intersects that set A. So let us take r is equal to 1. Let us see what will happen. So for, for r is equal to 1. So if you put r is equal to 1 here, we will have a ball with center x and radius 1. So it intersects A, that means the intersection not equal to 5. Okay, so there is no more space to write. Just make a screenshot of it, then I will go further. So let me show the same thing in this diagram. So suppose we have a point X somewhere here. 
I don't know it, where it is. Uh, see, x is here. So we have an open ball with center x radius 1. So let me draw a ball with center x and radius 1. So we have a ball like this. Getting? So intersection A, you can easily see in this diagram the intersection is non-empty. So the intersection is non-empty. That means definitely we can find at least one point. So let us select one point. So and we will call it as x1. So let me mention then we can choose. So we can choose some point. Okay. We can choose. I'm calling it as x1. So x1 belongs to bx1 intersection A. So let me show in the diagram. Okay. So we have chosen one point and we have called it as x1. So x1 is somewhere here. So this is true for every r greater than 0. This time we took r is equal to 1. We can do the same thing for r is equal to 1 by 2 also. Let us do the same. So for r is equal to 1 by 2. So that means I need to put here r is equal to 1 by 2. So b x this time center x radius half intersection a not equal to 5. If you put it here, we will have the same. See this time what I'm doing, I have reduced the radius and now it is half, getting half. But still the intersection is non-empty. That means again, we can choose one point. So let me call it as x2 and show me here. Let me show here x2. So this time we have chosen one point x2. So therefore then we can choose, we can choose a point x2 belongs to bx1 by 2 intersection a getting we can repeat the same thing for r is equal to 1 by 3 so that means okay so this time i am taking a radius 1 by 3 and we will have a smaller circle again the intersection is non-empty so that's why we can choose one point x3 i can do the same thing for 1 by 4 also 1 by 5 also that means i am reducing the center uh, radius of that circles getting so we will have a co-centric circles with reducing radius getting and each time I'm selecting a point it is quite possible because each time we are getting the intersection not equal to phi getting so let me write in general in general okay general in general what can we do r is equal to 1 by n what will you get bx 1 by n intersection a not equal to phi getting and uh, we can choose and we can choose we can choose a point xn belongs to bx1 by n intersection a actually it is true for every n belongs to set of natural numbers so let me mention and so on and so on getting for 1 by 2 1 by 3 1 by 4 1 by 10 1 by 100 1 by 1000 for every real number r is equal to 1 by n we can do it and each time we can choose one point so in this way we are constructing a sequence xn we are getting a sequence xn getting x1 x2 x3 x4 for nth term we got xn and so on okay so let me write the next part just make a screenshot of it then i will go further okay see uh, xn belongs to the intersection that means xn is in both sets it lies in ball as well as in set a so let me mention that is xn belongs to b x 1 by n and xn belongs to a this is true for all n belongs to set of natural number getting so the important thing is xn belongs to a so just now i told you it is a sequence we got a sequence so it is a sequence of points of a getting so all terms are the uh, all terms are in a so we got a sequence of points of a so therefore let me mention therefore we get a sequence we get a sequence xn of points of a since all points we have chosen from set a such that such that such that let me write this one xn belongs to bx1 by n getting xn belongs to bx1 by n and this is true for all n belongs to set of natural number right see here let me show you here uh, we have a ball with center x and radius 1 by n radius is 1 by n 
See this xn belongs to this ball, xn belongs to this ball. That means distance of x and xn is less than its radius, getting since that point lies inside a ball. So therefore I can write, so implies distance between xn and x is less than its radius, which is one by n. See, but one by n tends to zero as n tends to infinity, get it? So therefore I can write, that dxn x that is also tends to zero. Basically it is a distance, it cannot be negative. It can be either zero or greater than zero, right? But here we are saying it is less than some real number which is moving towards zero. So obviously this number also will move towards zero. What is meaning of that? Let me add here as n tends to infinity, okay? See, uh, let me add here distance between xn and x means what? means what here suppose we have a x let me show in on a real line actually we have a, this matrix space let me show in real line so here x1 we have x2 we have x3 we have and in this way we have an xn so distance between xn and x tends to zero that means all these points are moving towards x it simply we can say that xn converges to x okay so let me remove this part so therefore therefore or simply you can say they implies xn converges to x. The very important thing we have got, okay? So xn converges to x. So let us use the given information. What is the given information? That matrix uh, in a matrix space xd, a set is compact. The set which we have taken A, the set A, that is a compact set. So let us use this information. So we have, we have A is compact, right? See, but in previous videos, we have already proved compact matrix space is sequentially compact. So here A is compact. So that's why we can declare that A implies A is sequentially compact. Sequentially compact. Okay. Uh, let me remove this part. So we'll have some more space to write. Sequentially compact means what? Every sequence has convergent subsequence, right? So here A is sequentially compact and Xn is a sequence of points of A, since Xn is a sequence of points of A. So A, as A is sequentially compact, that Xn has also convergent subsequence. So let me mention here, therefore, sequence Xn has convergent subsequence okay since this is definition of sequentially compact matrix space right so it has a convergent subsequence so let us call it as xn k convergent subsequence in a sequence in a say xn k so that means xn k is a convergent subsequence right but see as the original sequence xn moving towards x as the original sequence xn converging to x, it means that subsequence also will obviously converge to x. But, but the original sequence xn converges to x, so therefore that subsequence xnk also converges to x, getting since main sequence converges to x. And this is a subsequence, no? so obviously it will converge to x. But the important thing is it has a convergent subsequence in A, let me show here. So it is a convergent in A, inside A. So that means it converges to X, that means that X also is in A, right? So you remember, uh, okay, just let me write here, therefore X belongs to A, simply I wrote here. But do you remember uh, that we started with X belongs to A bar and we finally we got X belongs to A. So therefore I should mention, therefore, Therefore, a, a bar subset of A, since we started with one point from A bar and finally we proved that it is in A, so that's why A bar subset of A. So this is equation number two. See, in one we have stated that A is subset of A bar and now we are saying A bar subset of A. So let us combine one and two. So from one and two, what can we say? A is equal to A bar and this is the definition of closed set. So that's why we can declare, therefore, A is closed. Okay, just a minute. Huh? A is 
clues. So in this way we proved if you have any compact subset of a matrix space then 101% it is a closed set. Make a screenshot of it then we will stop. Thank you. See you.